Hi everyone, so I wanted to do a little video. It is kind of different from my usual videos, but I thought you all would enjoy it. And that is, I wanted to share what I've done so far on a busy book that I'm making for Peyton. Now, if you don't know what a busy book is, it is a... Um, usually a handmade book and it has different fabric pages with different little activities where um, kids can practice matching or um, different things and it keeps them busy for one thing and also helps them with some of their sensory learning and um, just different little skills and so I have actually been working on this book a lot longer than I would like to admit I started designing it before I was even pregnant with Peyton just because I wanted to make one but um, I took quite a bit of time off from it and then I recently gotten back to working on it it is still a slow process but I want to share what I have done so far so this is the cover this is the first thing that I made um, and I uh, looked at a lot of busy books online to get ideas so most of my pages are not original ideas for me but I am adapting them um, to fit my style and because a lot of people use mostly felt on busy books and to be honest I don't like felt so I am um, taking lots of people's ideas and changing them to fit my busy book um, and then a few pages are my original designs but um, here is the cover. I really, really love how it turned out. And it's going to have Velcro right here because there will be a strap that comes around and fastens. And this is the first thing I made. I made it a couple of years ago and then pretty much stopped working on the book entirely. But recently I have gone in and made the inside cover. And I made all these little buntings. I hand stitched Peyton Willow on it. And, um... It was actually supposed to fit just straight across the page, but they ended up being slightly too big, so I did have to curve them to fit. Um, but I am really happy with how it turned out. I think it is super cute, and you can probably hear Peyton in the background. She just woke up, so she's a little fussy right now. So on to the other pages. Here will be the first page. I have not trimmed them down to size. That's why they look so big. Um, but I used a freezer paper stencil that I created. I have a tutorial on freezer paper stencils if you want to see that. And I made the treasure map and the treasure chest that you can open. And there are jewels in there. So this page you can practice uh, tracing, you can count, you can identify the different colors and how many of each color there are. So there's a few different skills you can practice with this page in particular. The next page spread is page two and three, and it will be like this. So page two uh, is a window, and it was supposed to have um, a piece of vinyl, so it actually kind of looked like glass, but I had trouble sewing the vinyl down, so I just completely got rid of the vinyl. But I have curtains here, and the window panes, and then the Velcro where um, it'll have interchangeable weather. So you can put a, the sun or the cloud or whatever, and then the ones you're not using will go in the zipper pocket. Now actually this is my least favorite page that I've made so far. It didn't quite work out exactly like I wanted, and the stitching's a little messy, but... Um, I think it still worked out good. And Peyton's favorite color right now is purple, which is why I did purple curtains. Okay, so I had to run and go get Peyton because she was putting up quite a fuss. So this is page three, and um, it has a tree, and I hand sewed um, like wood grain and stuff on the trunk. And it's going to have a little basket here, and then apples. <laughs> She's waving at the camera can have apples that are either velcroed or snapped onto the tree, I haven't decided yet, and then you can take them off and put them in the basket to store. So um, that is all I've gotten done so far, but you want to be in the camera? Okay. Um, but I will quickly kind of explain a little bit about how I made the pages. Um, for each one I cut them bigger than they needed to be and then marked on the back hi there 
<laughs> I marked on the back the square because I have all the measurements for what each page needs to be. So I have that lined up on the back and then I use those as guidelines for where to place all my stuff. And um, there is a layer of lightweight fusible interfacing on here to give the fabric some strength so that it doesn't stretch and warp while I'm working with it. And then uh, the same with the pieces that I've sewn on, like the tree, I put um, fusible interfacing onto both these pieces before I cut them out so that it will cut down on fraying for one thing and it will also give it a little extra strength. And then I stitched everything on. This is where a lot of people would use felt because you don't have to worry about the fraying and all that. Thank you. Um, but like I said, I just don't particularly like felt and I think the fabrics with their little prints and things is prettier. So that is what I'm going with. It does take more time to use regular fabrics, but I really don't mind that. I think Peyton is worth it. And so yeah, hopefully I will finish this sometime in her lifetime. Um, but I wanted to show, here's the back of another page. I've got the page marked out. And then um, you can see where I sewed all of the treasure chest on and everything. And yeah, that is the busy book that I am working on for Peyton. And so far I am pretty happy with how everything is turning out. No, I do not have tutorials on this stuff. Um, I'm making it all up as I go. And I originally had wanted to film some and do tutorials and then I quickly realized that was just going to be entirely too difficult. So yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> but I will try to do an, uh, another update after I get some more progress done. And then of course a video or at least pictures on my Facebook page once it is complete. So I hope you <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video and didn't mind the extra visitor in it. And I will have some more videos up soon. Bye.